Why is that? The reason is our object is huge and the scale of the object is actually 0.1. So the curve has to be 10 times bigger than the object until it produces a second replica. And how do we fix that? We select the object and press Control A and we can apply something to the object. If we say scale to object data that means that the current scale will actually equal 1 or 100 percent. If we do that our object gets scale, gets aligned along our curve just fine. Okay, But it doesn't look good yet. Um, we're not going to use a relative offset we're going to use a constant offset and that constant offset should be around 1.8 well, that's a little much. Make it 1.6, and uh, again you can fine tune it until you like it. Maybe 1.65. That should do. Okay. Now we have our chain, and it is the length is controllable, real easy. I like that a lot. But our chain doesn't do much. And in order to fix that, we're going to select the chain again, add a modifier that's called curve. The curve modifier, again, the object is the curve, so you can press just um, paste here, Control V, and now the curve is going to affect the shape of the chain. And to do that, I just go tap into edit mode and move this up. You can move that in any direction now, and um, if you are having if you are having troubles because your your uh, chain start isn't at the isn't at the start of the um of the curve you can go into edit mode select the select this go into edit mode and move it over here tap out of edit mode and you should see no good. okay just move the curve just move the curve until it uh, aligns with your with the beginning of the chain and now you can um try and control your chain you can extend it again, you can rotate this, you can scale it up and if you're still not having enough control then you can press A twice and press W to subdivide and you get another controller handle in here and of course you can do that as often as you like. Now we have a nice controllable chain. Let's go out of edit mode and let's come to the material of the chain. And um, you saw my chain, it's it's nice and shiny and chroma effect going on. And a lot of you have probably tried to achieve that, but it didn't quite work out. And the reason for that is usually if you click on this button or press F5 and say add a new material, and let's call it shiny. The reason is if you um if you go to mirror transparency and push the ray mirror and move it all the way up so it gets 100% um, refle uh, reflection. You'll see that it's reflecting in the preview, it's reflecting the uh, squares on the wall. And if we render this out, uh, the is from. so your chain is basically reflecting the sky and therefore almost invisible. Looks horrible. Let's change that. First of all, set the fade to material color not to sky color and metal isn't 100% reflective so let's choose 0.8 here also go to the shaders and set the shader to tangent the reflection to 1 and the heart to something above 300 maybe this okay and the shader to uh, 1.0 you can toy around with that a lot and it helps it helps understanding all those settings. Um, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Okay, now go over to texture here and press add new. Then click on F6 or go to the texture buttons and choose image. Now I already loaded this because I want to save some time. So you press load and you select your image over here. So, But I'm going to choose the texture that I already created. It's an image and it looks a little like this. You can find this if you type in Google shiny shiny and go to picture search or you can do it yourself in Photoshop with Chrome effect or well you'll you'll find a way. Now the important part is if we just use uh, on our chain it's not going to look very nice because it's very irregular. The idea is to um simulate the ref to simulate reflection from all around our chain. 
And the easiest way to do that is uh, change the map input to reflection. And thereby creating a nice chain. Okay, the reason why it looks so horrible is the lighting. The material, we're done with the materials so far. And an, a nice camera tip which I basically always use is I place an empty where I want the camera to look at. Press add empty and click the camera, right click the camera, press shift or hold shift and click the empty and press control T and say track to constraint. This way our camera is always aligned and uh, pointing towards the object that we have here. Okay, uh, you get into this view by the way by pressing zero on your numpad. Now move the camera is fairly close to the chain and our object over here, let's let's push it back a little so it's just the beginning and over here so we have we don't have the end of the chain in the picture. Okay. I'm sure you can uh, do a better job. Anyways, um, this is our camera setup now. Let's uh, delete this default sun. Go around where the camera is and uh, add a lamp, a spot. Spot lamp, you can also shift click on the empty, press Ctrl T, track it to constraint. So it will basically shine wherever the camera is shining. Okay, and let's um, increase the spot size, uh, the spot bias, so it doesn't give us as hard results. And then press add lamp again, we make a spot, move it over so it's uh, covering most of the chain. Maybe increase the spot size and of course the spot bias. That should do nicely. Okay, now uh, select your camera and choose the work color to be black. It looks a lot better if it's black. And uh, go to F9, the editing, and check depth of field here. Show the limits so you can see what you're doing. And increase the number for depth of field. You can see a little yellow X moving around. And that is going to stop right here. And this is our focus point. Unfortunately, we won't see any depth of field, and that is because Blender uh, needs to be needs some sort of a confirmation that is yes, he's actually supposed to use the the depth of field. You do this by clicking here and go into the Node Editor. Node Editor looks horrible at first, and you don't know what the heck you're doing, but it'll get clearer over time. So use, um, say, composite nodes. Those are the nodes that affect everything that's going on. Check use nodes and you'll see an input and an output. Uh, disconnect them. Move this a little over so we have some more space and say add, filter, defocus. Okay, now uncheck the Z buffer and the preview and connect the image output of the, of the input <laughs> to your image and also the Z of the image to uh, the Z in in uh, entrance in whatever you want to call it. Okay, and now the output of the defocus is the input of our final render result. Now here we have the f-stop. Some of you might know it from photography. The f-stop directly affects the depth of field. 128 in Blender means no depth of field at all. And we get um, with the pretty mar pretty large, um, pretty small number like uh, five, five point six is usually in very common app stuff. We'll get a nice depth of field going on. And um, okay, if we render this out, I'll check uh, full OSA or this is the oversampling for anti-aliasing. Anti because pictures just look so much better if you check that. And in order to use the nodes that we just created, you have to click Do Composite. And if we render this out by pressing F12, and there's the defocus. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any feedback or want to learn something else. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Frederick. Bye. I'm Frederick.